Hello everyone, uh, excuse me, welcome back to the podcast, I'm here with say Joel to in love with a bit of a special edition, a bit of a treat for sports movie topics, today's my birthday, so as a treat, you get me recording this podcast on my birthday so yeah nonetheless thanks for joining me today on the podcast got some stuff to go over today as far as sports are concerned but yeah some good stuff to go over the NBA finals has concluded um in my thoughts on both the uh, Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics as both seasons have now concluded. Go over the Yankees being the fastest team to 50 wins in over 20 years. Gets up there as well as Minka Fitzpatrick, how his extension Bulks up to the rest of the top safeties in the league. But nonetheless, thanks for joining me. If you're new to the podcast and you want to see more the sports of the topics, you can find them on the homepage. Click the description there in the corner. But yeah, you can find all the videos I post talking about Sports, most sports in general. But, yeah, thank you. Yeah, excuse me. Let's get into all oh, just shout, just shall we? So, the NBA Finals has officially concluded. Between the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. And. Now. I had predicted. It to be. The Miami Heat. And. The Phoenix Suns. The Phoenix Suns. You know. Had a great regular season, over 60 wins. They lost very scarefully in Game 7 of the semifinals versus the uh, Dallas Mavericks. You know, and ultimately, Mavericks lost. To the Warriors. And. The Warriors. After. Bowing. Thick and through. And being down. Two to one. In the series. They won three straight games. And. Are now once again. The NBA champions, their fourth title in eight years. I mean, Seth Curry is, I said before, I'll say again, the best shooter we've seen in the league, bar none. Clay Thompson, you know, it was a rough patch for the Warriors. You know, Clay came back in January. You know, it was strange for the Warriors because mostly it started about Curry and Wiggins. As, of course, Wiggins made 
the All Star weekend. And then all of a sudden, Clay comes back and adds a different element. And then Jordan Poole, who has really blossomed as this. As the season has progressed for the Warriors, it has really been well. Draymond Green, of course, is not who he was a couple years ago, but he's still very, very talented. And is really the juice to their team. So... When the core finally put together and, you know, with Suns losing to Mavs, it opened the door for the Warriors to make it to the finals and they battled adversity. The Celtics gave them a fight for much as the last said, but once the Warriors found their groove, they found their groove. And that's the thing about the Warriors, you know. Really, what doomed to me For the Mavericks. When face. I mean. The reason why I picked. The Suns over. Over the Warriors. Was because I thought. The Suns had better depth. And you know. The Warriors are the best shooting team. You know. If it goes right for them. Obviously. It can get a hand. In a hurry. But when they're off. It's ugly. And you know. With the Mavs. They try to beat the Warriors. At their own game. And. You know. How they beat the Suns. They shot a lot of threes. And. Playing. Against the Warriors like that was not going to bowl well. So, nonetheless, good for Warriors. No, Steph, this for Steph, Clay, and Draymond, all their four titles. You know, really great to see. I know my dad is a Minnesota fan, a Timberwolves fan. So, his probably assessment on Andrew Wiggins, you know, being drafted as a Timberwolf, never living up to expectations, but going to a great position and Golden State is now a champion. So, it's up for him, you know. I will say, because I know a lot of people are going to be bringing it up, you know, the Warriors won their first title before KD. Now, their next two titles were obviously right after KD came to the Warriors and he played great for them at Pretty much it was an unstoppable core. KD, Steph, Clay, I mean, Draymond, you know, they were unstoppable. Then obviously, the finals versus the Raptors really changed things, really changed things. KD got injured. Clay got injured. I mean, only so much that can happen. And obviously, KD 
went to the Nets. No, that has panned out. And Warriors are once again champions. It's easy to say, you know, that KD need the Warriors much more than the Warriors need KD. And that is likely true. But if KD, I mean, when KD was on the Warriors, he knew that the result was inevitable. When Now, if KD was on those teams, would they still have been LeBron? That's certainly that's certainly a question. Now they probably still at Mayo because before KD got there, they're one and one in the NBA Finals. So. It's a who's who, but now KD is still a great player, and I just don't want people to tar. I just hope people don't tarnish him much, really, just because of that decision. I mean, yes, it was kind of a It was one of the heinous decisions we've seen a superstar make for the NBA and sports nonetheless. But it happened. It happened. And that's all I'll say about that. Now, the Boston Celtics... Boston Celtics gave a fight to the Warriors, but didn't get done in the end. Now, I think we can all agree that when... The Celtics face the Heat. The Celtics face issues of consistency. You know, there would be times when the Celtics would be laying their foots off the gas pedal against the Heat, and the Heat would make them pay. And, again, if that three-pointer went for the Heat, went for Jimmy Butler at the end of Game 7, you know... That he would have probably went to the NBA Finals to face the Warriors. Not to say it would have been a different outcome, but it's certainly a question. Now, I will also say what a great coaching job by M.A. Yudoka in his first season as the head coach of the Celtics did a remarkable job. A remarkable job. Getting him to the NBA Finals, which by no stretch was easy. You know, 
sweeping the Heat or sweeping the Nets, excuse me. Win Game Seven versus the Bucks. Win Game Seven versus the Heat. You know, it was certainly not an easy pass path for Yadoka, but certainly there. You know, Marcus Smart won Defense Player of the Year. You know, there were times he was great, both defensively and offensively on the court. Jalen Brown, I think, was our most consistent player, or at least for the Celtics. He did a solid job as he could. Jason Tando had me scratching my head and had us scratching all of our heads. I mean, look, it's understandable if you get like 20, 27. Understandable, that's a good night. But for a guy that really to many was supposed to take a next his next step or leap was supposed to score, you know, thirty plus forty for a guy that's Scored a handful of 50 burgers. And. The league. You kind of thought so. But. Just didn't happen. Just didn't happen. Now. I love the core. I. Derek White was a solid pickup in season from the Spurs. It was a solid pickup. Derek White for the Celtics. You know, Ray Williams, Robert Williams, both were solid. Daniel Tice, I mean, they all did very well, very well. And don't want to discount them, but you were expecting more. You were expecting more, especially from a team that is at home. It's just the future is bright, it seems, for Boston, but. It was a bizarre scenario in game six. The New York Yankees, the New York Yankees the Yankees are the first team in over twenty years or the fastest team to reach 50 plus wins in over 20 years, you know, riding high over Anthony Rizzo and Aaron Judge, both having solid seasons. I mean, both New York teams are doing very well, very well. I mean, despite all the injuries. The Mets are still there. The Mets are still atop their division at 44 wins. I mean, despite the Braves' 13-game winning streak, the Mets are certainly thriving um, despite, you know, the early entry of DeGrom, the 
unfortunate injury to Scherzer, but they're holding it together. And the Yankees, I mean, over 10 games ahead, the first first place in their division. I mean, it's looking up for the Big Apple. It's looking up. And, you know, We get it's a long season, but when you look at pretty much the whole state of the MLB, you can see that the top teams, you know, the Yankees, the Twins, the Blue Jays, the only team that's been disappointing for a while has been Oh, excuse me, the Angels. Oops, that was close. The Astros are there. The Mets. The Dodgers. The Brewers. The Cardinals. You really know the good core of teams. And, you know, we'll see how it goes the rest of the way, but good for. New York baseball, because I mean, it's been one thing I'll, I have said about the Avalanche, the Colorado Avalanche for the NHL Stanley Cup. It's good to see for a town, for a city. For a state that has not done well as far as sports last couple years. For a team to be really competitive at the end of the year. It's definitely unique. And you know for New York as far as the Yankees and the Mets go. I mean they have been good but particularly the Yankees but. The Mets have done well and have faltered in the middle of the year. And, you know, the Giants, the Jets, I mean, the Rangers, you know, he could have said, but they lost in six games versus the Tampa Bay Lightning in the conference finals. For the Stanley Cup. New York sports have not done. Great as far as. The playoffs that's concerned. The last couple of years. So I mean we'll see. So in the middle of the season. But great to see for. The Yankees and the Mets. Mingo Fitzpatrick. Arguably the best safety in the league. Has on got his big extension last week. Four years. Over 73 million. You know. Safety market is incredibly underrated. Last couple of years. And you know when looking at the stats. It's interesting to see how. The safety market now stacks up. For safeties in the NFL, which I'll look for one sec. Ah, here it is. So, R as follow. The top five most paid safeties in the league are as follow. Minka Fitzpatrick, currently now the highest paid safety in the league. Jamal Adams is now number two. Harrison Smith is 
Number three, Justin Simmons. Number four, and Booth Baker. Number five, so arguably the five best safeties in the league. I mean, Minka knows well. Of course, there's still other guys in the mix. You know, you got Marcus Williams. You got Marcus May, Tyron Matthew. I mean, the safety market is really well in the NFL. And, you know, Boo Baker really kind of kicked it up, I would say, for the safety salaries in the NFL. But, yeah, I have no problem with those five safeties being paid as the top of the market. I mean, Boo Baker is great. Justin Simmons has been a solid piece. For the Broncos last few years. Harrison Smith. May, Harrison Smith and Jamal Adams. Might be. Well they're different. But also similar. They line up. Numerous places. On the field. And. You know those are two guys. You could probably argue. As. Probably shouldn't be top five, but that's certainly a question. You also have Derwin James, who, I mean, provided he can stay healthy. He's probably going to get a big contract from the Chargers. But, yeah, safeties are doing well in the NFL, so good to see. But, nonetheless, that's... All I have for the podcast today, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know I did too. Um, if you did, get to see a like, click the thumbs up. Uh, help out the video, help out the podcast. Also, click the description in the corner. Find that as well as well. But thank you all on this little special edition of sports OV topics, but be safe. I'm hanging out. Angel two on love here. See you guys next week for episode one of five. Peace.